Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to Going Deeper. My name is Andrews and today with me is Udeme. Hi Udeme. Hi Andrews. So tell us about yourself. Uh, for people out there, you know, both inside the church and also outside the church, tell us about who you are and uh, what are you doing in Lithuania? <laughs> okay. Um... My name is Udeme and um, I'm a data scientist. So I came into Lithuania about just, yeah, about two years ago, or yeah, there about September, 2019. And actually I was based in Nigeria before now. I'm from Nigeria and I've been based there. And then, so I got a job and, and then moved over to Lithuania. So it was basically work that brought me over to Lithuania. Awesome. And how did you adjust to life here? Um, how, how are you doing? I'm sure it's quite different. Yeah, very, very different with regards to the people and with particular attention to the weather. So mm. it's quite hot and very warm where I'm coming from. So when I got here, it was like freezing. I didn't know I was going to survive, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like you've adjusted already? Um... Yeah, I think I've really adjusted a whole lot, like really, because I can recall the first, um, so I came towards the fall in 2019, and it felt like I was going to die. Oh, my but goodness. then over time, I'm pretty okay. I'm pretty chilled, even during the very cold months, like the winter of this year was really cold, but... I mean, that was okay for me. So I think I've adjusted a bit. That's good to hear. Yeah. And uh, so how did you find Journey Church here in, in Vilnius? Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, the story about locating Journey Church was is quite a long story anyways, because okay. um, so I'm particular about where I worship. So when I knew I was going to come to Lithuania, I started looking out for churches in Lithuania and I didn't really find any church in particular that I would like to be you mm -hmm. know with so I reached out to a friend and she's in Estonia she's been in Estonia for a long while so I reached out to her since then Estonia is close to Lithuania probably there could be something she could figure out for me and she actually told me oh yeah that she worships at a particular church that's Focus Church and then that some folks from, of course, church will be going to Lithuania to start a new church. And mm -hmm. she the name of the church. I'm like, okay, cool. So I now looked up the church and I discovered they have like um, the mother church in the U.S. So I started listening to their sermons, started attending their services online just to have an idea of what it would feel like. So I was pretty much cool with it. So when I came here and I had to look at Journey Church. Even though as at then we didn't like officially launch just yet, but I just because I knew about it, so I had to find out, and yeah, I got close. That's yeah. amazing. Uh, small world, isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so could could you tell me a little more about uh, what you do in the church? What are the things that you're involved with? Um, okay, so in Journey Church, um, I think my primary role is in the worship team. So I play the Kohan every Sunday. I enjoy doing that like almost every Sunday. So I play the Kohan and I'm also part of the um, the young adult mm -hmm. team. Yeah. And I also join like the men's, um, of course, I'm your man. So I also joined the men's uh, life group. Yeah. And at some point I was also teaching the teenagers too at some point. Yeah. But primarily I'm in the worship team. Cool, that's awesome. It, it's always fun to watch you worship uh, when, you, when you're there up, uh, together with the band. Yeah. Um, so Udeme, what do you do other than work and church? Like um, what's, what's your uh, free time like? So two things you would catch me doing in my free time. The first one is either I'm doing a sporting activity, particular attention to football either I'm playing football mm -hmm. um, for the Americans either I'm playing soccer anyways yeah or you would just catch me watching or listening to music and just enjoying myself like worshiping or dancing all by myself yeah I really love music so mm -hmm. either I'm listening to music or I'm playing soccer that's so cool 
Yeah. Awesome. Um, now, how about your faith journey? Uh, you, you've mentioned that when you were planning to come to Lithuania, you already were looking for a church. So yeah. uh, you, you obviously became a believer still in Nigeria. Could you tell me a little more about that? Like, well, how, how did you find Jesus? Well, um, my faith journey is quite interesting. Um, I've, I grew up in a Christian home, so I've pretty much been around church. Mm -hmm. And I've actually been around church, but not necessarily gotten to know, you know, like God personally, but I understand all the activities that goes on in church and all of that. But I think where it kind of changed for me was in my university. And yeah, so I kind of had an encounter with God um back then in the university and that was what changed the entire story for me so um, of course i've already been familiar with the church activities but being in it was it was different because i didn't need like extra conviction to know that this was real because i've always been around church so i know all the activities that goes on but i kind of felt like something stronger pulling me and demanding more from me and yeah, so that was when everything changed for me. And ever since then, I've been very particular about uh, my faith life and, you know, my, the church that I attend and all of that, because it's primary to my growth. And being that I've already been like in church all my life, so I know what works and what doesn't work. So now yeah. I'm paying like much attention to, yeah, mm -hmm. the kind of church I find myself in. Cool, cool, cool. And how do you find the uh, Journey Church? Uh, so, you know, you now have been part of the church kind of for two years almost. Yeah. Um, and uh, how has that been for you? Well, for the best way to define Journey Church is just like what we say in Journey Church. It is a place where it's easy for you to find and experience God. And one of the unique things I like about Journey Church is it's not just you know church where you just come to worship it's a community so yeah you kind of feel relaxed you kind of feel like you're in a family and that's that's something that is very big for me because um, i'm a people's person so i love um, being around people i love interacting with people yeah and so journey church gives me that opportunity and yeah we hug a lot in journey church i love it it's just that we <laughs> um with the virus now, we can't really do it's much. It's a little harder with quarantine to do, <laughs> but yes. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's pretty warm and okay in Journey Church. I find it like a very safe place where you can easily share with people and people tend to understand with you. You don't get judged in any way or you don't feel like whatever you say, people are going to look at you in some way. You kind of feel like you're welcomed, you're appreciated, and you always want to give more. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll speak probably more than just for myself. We are all very, very happy to have mm -hmm. you in the church. For me as a Lithuanian, I think it's, it's really awesome that you are here in Vilnius, that you are you know, working here, but also pursuing Jesus here and sharing Jesus with others here. So um, I want to thank you for that. That's, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the Sunday service. Um, so we had Pastor Kevin from Kenosha Vineyard, from the uh, from Kenosha Journey Church yeah. in in the states, uh, share with us about uh, Noah's Ark. We're doing a series doorways and and talked about the the Ark door um, and how. Jesus is revealed even in Noah's story and what a controversial story it actually is. Yeah. Um, and um, how God's mercy and justice are revealed in that story. Could you talk to me a little bit about uh, your thoughts, your experience, maybe your, some of your insights from, from the Sunday message? Yeah, um, I really enjoyed the Sunday message because... Um, well, it's, it's what needs to be more emphasized in our day because I'm um, coming from the angle that um, PK actually put it, you know, that we read that Noah's story and we kind of read as if Noah was like a saint mm -hmm. without sin and that was why God favored him. 
but pick a kind of made it clear that God favored him, not because he was a saint, <clears throat> because even like um, the uh, verses before that particular verse that talked about the favor of God kind of said that everybody in the world at that particular point was corrupt, was bad. Yeah. And But God decided to favor Noah. So the thing that stood out for me is that it's not, our righteousness does not guarantee us the grace of God. So God does not deliver his grace to us based on how right we live or how, how many sacrifices we've done and all of that. Mm -hmm. It's just a gift. And it points back to the salvation story that it's, it's, not, it's not by works. It's, it's totally a gift of God that is given unto us. So yeah, I really appreciate that part because the world perspective is more like you need to put in work in order to be rewarded. And obviously that's okay in like proper secular environments. I mean, if you don't get your work done, you won't get paid and all of that. Yeah. But when it comes to the matter of salvation and God's gift to mankind, it's not, it's not a function of works. It's just totally his free gift. Yeah. So more like, more like the, the salvation story of God is not a ladder where, you know, where God is up there cheering us and be like, yeah, keep climbing, you're gonna make it. It's more like a cross where it's God coming down with stretched arms and ready to accept us. Mm, that's so powerful, isn't it? Yeah. Um, how, how about the application for you? Um, what, what, can, what conclusions can you draw for yourself and what, uh, what can you apply to your day-to-day -day life? These truths that you've just mentioned, how, how can they be um, applicable in, in the day-to-day -day for you? Yeah, so um, for a very long time in my early Christian faith, I used to live this very conscious work-based life where, of course, it's good to be intentional, but I'm very intentional about everything I'm doing. And so at some point where I discovered that I've sinned or I've fallen short, I feel so sad, so wicked, and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to make it. God hates me now and all of that. And I think that's like the strategy of the devil because I feel that way and I could feel down for a long time. I don't want to talk to God because I feel he doesn't want to hear me right now. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a right standing with him, whatever that means. Hmm. Until, you know, I heard a message like the one that PK preached and he kind of pointed to me that it's at the lowest point like that, that God wants you. In fact, God didn't come for you in your right nature. He came for you at that broken state. So the point where you feel you're not, you don't have the right standing to talk to God, that's the point where you need to talk to God more. So ever since then, um, of course, I have a new life in Christ. So I'm a new creature. I don't have the nature of sin, but I'm still in the flesh, meaning I have the tendency to sin, but it doesn't mean that I will continue in sin. So it means like even if I fall short, that's the point where I lean on to God more, I trust in him more, and I believe in him more just to scale through. And for the later stages of my life, that has really been um, the way I've applied this. And it's really been good because I don't feel like totally condemned when I do wrong. And of course, I don't intentionally do wrong, but I don't feel totally condemned when I've discovered that I've made a mistake. I just cry out to God, godly grief and then i go back continuing in the work he has called mm -hmm. awesome uh i want to address uh, all of those watching um you know if you're watching this and you're thinking about the message of the gospel um i just want to say you know consider this you know that god did not have this relationship with us kind of like a ladder or something like with uh what uh, Udeme mentioned, you know, it's not about our effort. It's not about us trying to reach God, but it's about God stooping down to our level to rescue us. And his death and resurrection uh, are a way for us to enter into a relationship with the Father because our sins are covered, our sins are forgiven. And uh, even in our worst, we can come to God for salvation. Uh, just as Udeme was saying. Uh, thank you, Udeme, for these beautiful insights. It's awesome. Um, 
Would you pray for us all um, that we would live in this truth, that we would live in this reality, and uh, that this would be a reality for all of us? Yeah. Um, Daddy, we thank you and we love you. Thank you for the opportunity to be benefactors of your grace. Um, we appreciate the work that Christ did on our behalf, and that's why we have access to call you Father. We thank you, Lord, because this will not just be a work or a story that we read about. This is our life. This is our reality. This is the reason why we live. And Father, we pray for the hearts of men, that their hearts be made ready, their hearts be open to receive this gift, mm -hmm. that every kind of you know, notion about you know, striving for salvation that they may have thought of or they may have known all their life, that this message would kind of let them appreciate the free gift that God has made available to them and open up their hearts to receive it. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because we see souls and souls being saved. Thank you. We appreciate you, Dad. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Udeme. And yeah. thanks, everyone, for tuning in for yet another of our episodes. And I look forward to worshiping with you on Sunday and then chatting with you next week again. Bye for now. Bye.